Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and there's a lot of red in the markets. This is CoinPaprika.com and um, we've got, first thing we've got is, uh, it looks like XDC is down the most. Let me do that again. Yeah, Hedera Hashgraph, VeChain, these are down the most. Now I did buy the a little bit of the Algorand dip this morning. I bought it directly to my Ledger Nano S, by the way. Um, and uh, because I'm, I'm accumulating all these and I feel like I need to get a little more Algorand. Okay, now it's not just red in the crypto. Stocks fall to start September as market reels. And just a little reminder, as all the markets are in the red from masterworks.io, which is one of my sponsors, top of the description of this video, click on it, tell them DA I sent you. S&P down 20%. NASDAQ down 30, Bitcoin down 60, Tech Darlings down 70, the art market, as they say, there's always a bull market somewhere. I thought this was one of the greatest marketing tweets that I've ever seen. True story, I've been accumulating art myself because uh, on the masterworks.io platform, just as a little hedge, you never know. That's what I do. September could be fun, folks. This is a true story. Um, we've covered this week Jungle Inks uh, idea that, that there could be a settlement in September. I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying there could be. Never know. Um, we've got so many things that are going on in that um, in uh, in the month of September. And I want to show you this. Well, first, one of them is Flare is supposed to drop in the month of September. The other one is the ETH merge is supposed to happen in September. And also XLS20. This is the the um, amendment that's there that's supposed to be go through in the next two weeks for there to be NFTs on the XRP ledger. And then I said crypto market surge question mark. You never know about that either. Now, I wanted to make a point on this XLS20. I want you to think about this for a minute because we've been busting it wide open for the last year. So we know Ethereum got a free regulatory pass. We know that there were all kinds of shenanigans involved in that. Well, think about this for a minute. And, and we also know that Bitcoin and Ethereum have gotten their, and we'll look at it here. Let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum market cap is $191 billion. XRP's is $16 billion. So my question to you is, what if XRP was given a level playing field back in June on June 14th of 2018 when Hinman gave his Ethereum Bitcoin free pass speech? What would have happened to the value of XRP's from then till now? And then add in there, what if XRP, what if there were NF, what if you could um, build NFTs on the XRP ledger the way you will be able to supposedly in about two weeks? And then I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to ask you a, another what if. What if you get this and you get this and you get this and you get this? What if all at once and, and, all of that's against the backdrop of the fact that Ethereum doesn't work and never has. What if all of a sudden XRP gets regulatory certainty out of a potential SEC settlement or something, and at the same time you get NFTs, and at the same time you get Flare and all of this, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Ethereum now has to compete with the XRP ledger, which actually works. And even 2.0, Ethereum's questionable. Well, here's what I say. I say, here's the what if. You're, you're, if, if XRP had all the regulatory advantages that, that Ethereum had had over the last three years, the equivalent XRP price would be somewhere between $3.70 and $5, folks. So all bets are off when there's a level playing field. And I'm not saying you will. But what if you got a level playing field this September? Let me show you something else that's going on in September. You've got in Las Vegas, September 6th to September 8th, Apex, which is XRP's development summit. Okay, they're doing that in Las Vegas. You also have 
the Solo Genic is doing their meetup there in Las Vegas at the same time. Um, and they're doing theirs, it looks like. Let's see where they're doing theirs at the MGM, I think I read. Um, and here's their schedule. Yeah, MGM Grand Hotel. And then let me see where the Ripple thing is. I think it's, I think I read that it was at the Virgin Hotel or some accommodations. Let's see. I'm just curious. Virgin Hotels. So you got that going on. This is this is all leading up to some exciting stuff. All right, moving along. Wanted to show you this. This is um, interesting. This was um, from Riz XRP. Listen to this guy. Everybody was saying XRP is dead. Men lie, women lie, the charts don't lie. So right here in this channel, we said, who cares what the news are saying? Look at the charts. XRP is about to explode. And it went from about 20 cents up to $2. Now, what we're looking for is the same kind of cross, right? We had this cross down in 2020, you know, signaling a long-term bear is coming. And we're in the midst of that, right? There's no signal close to coming that we're about to have the green line cross above the red. We've still got some time to go. But take a look at this white line right here. This is our market structure that XRP has been forming for years. You think about since May 2017, we've been forming this structure and this is our main base that we've been forming. If XRP in the coming months gets down to this 15 cents, it's going to be a very nice time to get into the market. I'm not giving some financial advice here. I'm just stating absolute facts. This is an incredibly strong market structure that XRP has been forming for five years, over five years. So it's time to pay attention to that structure if it were to break. Now the question is, could this break? Is there something in the charts that could cause it to break? Well, one thing I would like you to look at is the RSI. And the RSI for the better part of one year, right, has been in this trend. What you want to pay attention to is a break of this trend. A break of this trend will shift the momentum, shift the momentum from prices going down to prices starting to go back up. This change in momentum is what XRP needs. We're not close to it yet. So pay attention. We're on a weekly chart. The weekly RSI has got to break this trend line. Now. Okay, that's interesting stuff. Um, he's got top, that's, he's put XRP in the top five for September, it looks like. Now folks, Everything we've been he hearing is the crypto market bearishness and all of that. And all of a sudden, this morning, I'm hearing these kind of things. I'm expecting it to be signaling a full recession. And we'll get to the tipping point where bond yields start to fall. It'll start affecting asset markets. So I'm not a believer we go to new lows. I've done surveys after survey and seen all the surveys on Twitter. 70% of all respondents in crypto and macro think equities go to new lows. Now, if that is the case, then most people are positioned for it. So therefore, the path of pain is the opposite. And I think the market's priced that in. So I think there's no certainties in this world. I can be wrong. But my view, the balance of probabilities are for me that the, the uh, risk asset markets, equities, crypto have bottomed. We are having a retest. And as the economic data shifts and bond yields come down, that'll drive that further and it'll be a further hated rally because nobody will understand. We're going into a recession. Why are equities going up? Well, because they already priced the recession. It's their job to be forward looking indicators. So that's kind of the big picture framework. All right. And then there's this guy. Remember David Rubenstein? No, folks. You, you, I don't, I don't even mention organizations like this on this channel, so I'll let you read it. You see this one right here? He's the chairman at this, and this organization right here, this one right here, um, runs the world, folks. This is like uh, three-letter stuff, okay? That's as far as I'll go with that. All right, I wanted to show you him because this is him on CNBC. Listen to this. Are you? bullish on crypto or technology? I am bullish in the sense that I think the greatest fortunes are made when people go against conventional wisdom. Now, who knows where crypto is going to be, but right now crypto has been beaten down dramatically. Probably if you go into this and not just crypto itself, but uh, I've invested personally in the uh, uh, 
companies that surround the industry, not just the cryptocurrencies themselves, but companies that service the industry. You mean like the coin in bases? Those type of companies. They, they have not actually um, done that well lately. They've been hurt by crypto uh, decline. But in time, I think the industry is not going away. Members of Congress are not going to push to regulate this industry unduly, in my view. Uh, the crypto uh, constituency is very strong in Congress. They tend to be very Republican, very libertarian, and very willing to spend money on lobbying. I interviewed somebody the other day, Sam Bankman Fried, who you probably have interviewed as well, and you know he spends a fair amount of time in Washington, puts a fair amount of money into political uh, contributions, and I, I just think the industry is not likely to uh, be soft uh, in terms of its uh, dealing with members of Congress. They're going to be fairly aggressive, and I think members of Congress are probably going to react by not pushing the regulators to do more than they're already doing. Right. Now, the important thing he said there that you need to get out of that is that the, these regulators are not going to be allowed to crush the crypto industry. And when you hear it from him, remember, folks, you want to see you want to talk about someone who can, who can make a phone call. That guy right there, write it down. That guy is the type of guy who can pick up the phone, make a phone call and say, fire Gary Gensler and this guy's gone. Or he, that, that guy's the kind of guy that can pick up the phone and call Gary Gensler and say, you're gone. And he's gone. And it's it, that's the fact, Jack. And you don't have to take my word for it. If you don't believe me, you go start studying his little organization right there. And you'll believe me then. Now, moving along. Crypto Vinso. Now, I want to mention this because this guy has a, um, he had a, a pretty large following on here. This is, I think he was, he went by Crypto Whale, and I used to, he had some, some really good tweets, and I don't know why he got suspended from Twitter, but he had to restart his thing. Now he's Crypto Vinco. So go give him a follow. He says, just in, U.S. government sought records on Binance CEO for crypto money laundering investigation. But, and I wanted to point out here, they're, they're asking for Binance's, um, uh, records from Binance, are they asking for records from the SEC and from the Ethereum founders? And honored by colleagues as the man who went to the Securities and Exchange Commission and blew the whistle on Bernie Madoff in his $50 billion fraud. How many times did you send material to the SEC? May 2000, October 2001, October, November and December 2005, then again June 2007 and finally April 2008 so five separate SEC submissions but something did happen corruption they were meeting remember this they were meeting with their previous clients while at the SEC clients with very strong interests in outcomes that they ruled over in their government posts Hinman even continued to earn 15 million from his previous law firm the whole three years he was at the SEC. You're either a horrible lawyer who can't see the conflict of interest, or you don't care because you're horribly corrupt. So you've got the skills or the moral compass, but you can't do this and have both. And when you're pulling in 5 million a year, odds are it's not the skills they're missing. And that is the bigger story of what is going on with the SEC and Ripple. It's not about cryptocurrency. It's not about, the, uh, about Ripple. It is about the SEC, specifically corruption and regulatory capture. Um, a person can, can buy uh, from any number of different identities. We may limit the size, the, the unit size of a sale, um, just to um, make it easier to disguise. Um, so if, if you are a real, if you want to plan on investing uh, several million US dollars worth, um, then you can do that in uh, for multiple identities. And honor. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that you could buy in the Ethereum ICO, you could buy Ethereum with multiple identities. And Joseph Lubin would help you do that, just to help to disguise it. Thanks for listening.